I have to start telling you that I love fashion. I also want to share this quote with you, still referring to this morning, before we start. I think this is one of the key problems we have, uh, uh, beyond fear. But let's go into the manifesto. It was two and a half years ago that I felt compelled to write about the truth in our industry. I just couldn't continue. I felt it was dishonest to continue as if everything was still the same. So it was hard to write. I had to rewrite it several times to really phrase it perfectly, as perfect as I can. And it was also a kamikaze thing to do because you might lose all your clients in one go. What happened is that actually I got a lot of acclaim, a lot of uh, conversations with others, many emails about people suffering in this industry in pain, not being acknowledged, working like crazy, being squeezed like lemons, not ever having their name somewhere. And I felt uh, many people said, you finally uh, phrased what we all feel. So basically what I'm going to uh, share with you is what you feel uh, and because it's already written some time ago, I'm also going to try to give some answers. I have only half an hour, so I will f have to work very, very hard and be quick. I start with education, where I have to see that fashion institutes in the world still are educating single individual star designers for the catwalk. They don't seem to understand that we are living in a world of exchange, a world of uh, a changing economy, a world where young people want to work together in all the disciplines they do. As a result, the fashion world is still working in a 20th century mode, celebrating the individual, elevating the it people, de developing the exception in a society hungry for consensus and altruism, a world where individualism is long over. This places fashion outside of society and by de facto makes it old-fashioned. It's very strange because in my career, fashion always has been there first, always. I could count on fashion as a trend indicator blindly, and this is for the first time that I see that fashion is no longer part of the avant-garde. And this is why we move from fashion to clothes, and this is why we are stagnating as, a, as an industry. A second very important... Sorry, I'm going to give you some um, ways to do this maybe better, is we should educate in teams, not only, but several things should be done in teams. We should learn people do, to do industrial fashion design, as you do industrial uh, design, as Tom Dixon. Not everybody needs to be a catwalk designer. Not everybody will become a star. 24,600 students graduate in the United States every year. They cannot all be a catwalk designer. So they're frustrated, and they need to learn how to just make interesting everyday clothes, denim and so on. That's industrial products. They have their own rules, their own fun at leisure, all sorts of streetwear things, they, and young people are doing this, they're actually already going there, but the schools are not. And I think we should educate in couture, because later on I will explain why I think that comes back. The materialization is a big problem as well. Because of uh, money restrictions, the schools are getting rid of their ateliers and their making centers, and as a result, the students are no longer instructed in textile knowledge, they have no clue there is a debilitating lack of knowledge about textile in the world. It's a very, very big problem. Architects, designers, fashion designers, nobody knows anything anymore about textile. This is why I'm on a quest to save textile, to make an MFA of textiles in Parsons, New York, which is going to try to bridge uh, Silicon Valley with Hudson Valley, high-tech and slow craft, and I believe they both are bringing us to a new society to come, with a very different way of um, production as well. This is not the only thing. The ignorance uh, amongst journalists is terrifying. 
um, very important magazines, which I'm not going to name here publicly, but you know the ones I speak about, all of them almost, will, <laughs> will say, um, the comic of print, and then everything is jacquard. Stupid, you know. Only recently, in uh, Brit one, a British uh, L, they spoke about the Prince of Wales uh, pattern coming back, and they call it a print. You know, they don't know that it's woven. It's really very uh, damaging, because the public doesn't get any information. And in the meantime, the whole industry of textile is battling to survive. Italy, I mean, they're very brave. And it's almost an, a sort of an extinct species. So wake up. We need to educate about textiles. It's not for nothing that the House of Chanel is actually um, buying up mills so they can still have their merchandise. So they are wise. They know that they will rely on this. So I think we should educate fashion journalism, curating and critique. We should educate the young also by older and senior staff. We should invest in schools and creating incubators, and we should create with students new uh, business models. This is what we do with the university in um, the south of France, Marseille. We work every summer with students to create really a new perspective on business, really from scratch. We should focus on textile education for sure, everywhere in all domains and we should sponsor textile research. The big makers like Nike, Adidas, know they now are opening research centers. They know that their future is in textile only. And I believe, I happen to, I start to believe that maybe textile is going to be the dominant change of factor in the future, also in manufacturing. Manufacturing is my other point which, as you know, is a very big problem because we have farmed it out with disastrous results, with slavery, and it continues. With sometimes when you buy a T-shirt, you kill somebody. It's better to buy fur as a sort of matter of speech. And, um, you know, the latest comers on the, on the market of cheaper and cheaper prices, Primark, now got a few pages in Vogue, the temple of luxury goods, with evening dresses for 10 pounds. How is it possible that a garment is cheaper than a sandwich? How can a product that needs to be sewn, grown, harvested, combed, spun, knitted, cut and stitched, finished, printed, labeled, packaged and transported, cost a couple of euros? It's impossible. It is impossible. So you cannot blame the consumer. They are happy to have new goods. And I guess that we should together make a quest to make legislation in Europe at least to have uh, minimum prices. My time is almost up. Um, let me see how I can skip. My text, which you're going to get, so whatever I'm not going to say, you will get anyhow. My text also explains why today all the different designer types we have are making clothes in no longer fashion. Fashion design, uh, Poiret, Vionnet, Balenciaga, Chanel, Cardin, Saint Laurent, Montana, Romeo Zigli, Cavacubo, they all make or made fashions which change the way we are the way we walk, the way we stand, the way we flirt. To completely, the silhouette becomes different. Now, designers are styling. It's vintage uh, fashions, which are recycled. So we are all designing garments, especially the new girls on the block. Uh, very interesting, all these women designers who claim a practical, practical wardrobe to be a mother and travel and work and be sexy and everything else. They make what Susie Menkens calls very cutely, clothes that work as hard as I do. And these people are actually setting a new tone as well. Let me see for some um, advice. 
I think that buying and sharing up textile plants could be a crucial thing for brand survival. I think that instructing the press would be a, a first thing to do. I see that we would, should lobby for regulated pr price points, and we should uh, mix old and new tools. We will reach local production, and there will be a new um, event, and I want to show you a small movie, even, even if it takes away my time, to make you happy about the future of production. This is in London. This is the first cloth mill to have opened in London for 100 years. I actually only started weaving about three years ago, and initially this wasn't the plan. It was really just a... Um, he, for me, is representing the future. Many young designers are now changing machines, hacking machines, transforming machines, making a new sort of small cottage industries, which is the slow uh, revolution of making, which I think will come to our smaller cities, not just big cities. It's a new way of producing smaller scale, slower, better, better priced, and so on. Um, marketing, I, I'm going to read because I always get a bit overwhelmed when I speak about this. It is without doubt the per, per, perverse, ver, the perversion of marketing that ultimately has helped kill the fashion industries. Initially invented to be a science blending forecasting with market results to anchor strategies for the future, it has gradually become a network of fearful guardians of brands slaves to financial institutions and hostages to shareholder interest, a group that long ago lost the autonomy to direct change. Diversion of risk has become a dominant feature, especially present in the last nine years of the crisis. This repulsion has brought the fashion machine to a halt in order to be replaced by item selling, transferring the retail skills of leather goods to the retailing of clothes. The presentation, um, marketing, I think we should introduce anthropology as the science of human behavior, seconding and transforming marketing. I believe in a new form of marketing which is from science and which is truly interested in the way people and their products um, interact and from there try to see how that influences the future. I think there also is a very big need to bond the teams of design and marketing instead of pulling them apart, pulling them together. Today, designers are trained to be thinkers, to be also market-driven, and they are as powerful, I think, in the decision-making. The designers um, should give more voice to their teams, 
and create future stars. It's unbelievable that in every movie we see, at the end, you even see the driver, you see even the caterer. All the names of people involved in filmmaking are there. In fashion, there is just only one name. It's very, um, sort of, it's very unfashionable, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should embrace the female power we are doing, actually, and also very important, I believe in the, in the rise of the Southern Hemisphere, and I think we should scout for talent and new brands in the Southern Hemisphere. This is something which will, an emancipation which will happen soon. In the presentation, I think we should leave gender behind presenting together, which many people are now doing, starting to do. We should stream the products in theaters, and I think we should reinvent the trunk show of the future. But most um, best idea, I think, is to make fashion shows together, so it's worth a while to go, otherwise it's such a hassle to go there and then for 12 minutes. And then the best idea, maybe, is to ask established brands to adopt young brands, to have them in the pre-program. So while we are waiting the 20 minutes for the big stars to come, we can have nice new talent to look at, with the same models, the same infrastructure. And so the main brands could then adopt, if you want, uh, up-and-coming brands. That would be something we should do now. That's of our time and age. Let me skip a bit, because it's much too much. Advertising, I have a very funny thing on advertising. You have to read it. I'm not going to read it. It's basically saying that ad agencies are failing fashion terribly, because they still think that we can do with one image, one campaign for one season, whereas we see everybody else reading, texting, uh, l watching television, looking at a series, we are consuming five, six pictures at the same time. And then these brands and this advertising thing that we can do with this one image for a whole season. Why isn't there a serial approach? Why isn't there you know, something more entertaining? I think it's again something which doesn't belong to our time. Yeah, this is also quite a, maybe a good idea, is to ask brands to finance building. I think architects want to make incredible buildings, brands want to be remembered, and we need social housing. So why don't we ask brands to invest the money into very peculiar buildings, so it becomes the Hilfinger building, or whatever building we are talking about, the Burberry building, and it will be a landmark building, but it will be an ad at the same time. Just use the money in a very new, innovative way. For the press, we need to cultivate, we already said that. And for retailing, everything needs to be reinvented because all our, all, everything we do is from the 20th century. All concepts. Even concept store online was at the last moment of the 20th century. So we have not found a voice for this century yet. Maybe, I think, Dover Street is the only entity you could say is from this day and age, having very small offer, very well edited, very well presented, very focused, which is all what is going to happen in the future. Less slow, well done, well edited, well thought about, and so on. And, of course, co-branding is a very big thing, especially young people in young shops have very small collections. They think big collection is really old-fashioned. And they want to have a small few items, and then if they cannot do it, then they ask somebody else to do it for them. And, of course, we have seen recently Vetements, which asked to do all their clothes with others. That was a brilliant move, just telling everybody off. Like, we don't have to do it, they do it. And all these brands are super happy that they can do it. And we need to be more interactive in the way we display things. And then there is uh, consumers. It's the consumers also who are part of this non-fashion, more garment-driven moment. Um, 
Many people are making themselves beautiful with their hair and their tattoos and all the metal they have in their bodies. So for them, the garment is a bit of a handicap because they're so beautiful themselves that the garment doesn't really add anything. So for them, the garment is second important. In um, the jigs in Silicon Valley, they only have shorts and sweatshirts and hoodies. They have maybe a tuxedo, but they don't have a suit. They've never had a suit. And they say that they really don't have time for fashion because they need to concentrate on what they do. So there's also this trend towards non-fashion. Then there is the young people who want to share clothes. They want to have co-ownership of stuff. They buy expensive clothes together and they share. In Japan, many girls shop together as twins. And that's a whole new uh, situation in this world. They will rent clothes, lend clothes, transform clothes, find clothes. They will reintroduce hand-me-down clothes. Beautiful from mothers and grandmothers. They are giving a kind of noblesse oblige back to apparel. So the consumers um, are very dispersed, so it's very hard to work with them. And we need to know that the new generation, the generation Z or C, is going to spend only one third of their money on uh, various things like fashion. Um, so we really need to work on a more sustainable fashion. Young designers in schools are only wanting to think about sustainability. You need to know that it's no longer a requirement, it's something which is inbred. And we need to tell the truth to cons consumers, to really empower them with what we know of our processes also. Now, in this paper, there is a few exceptions. One is men, because men are still very interested in fashion. Thank you very much. We think that the business of men is going to grow exponentially in the future. There is much more um, animo, and why that is, is that the new man is fathering the children. This has never happened before, this is the first in society, that the fathers are taking care of the babies, they're bringing the babies to school, they're carrying the babies. I never see women anymore carrying babies in the whole world, it's the men. The men are pushing women to have babies earlier, and this obviously makes that we have a very new man. And this is a man which is more sensitive, more elegant, less macho, and possibly also more concerned with a fearless and altruistic future. So this is the new man. Now this man, which is the man, uh, let's say, of um, projected for our future, um, will need very new merchandise, very new aspect of dressing, very new approach to retailing, very new approach to editing. And this is why I need to say that recently I'm not sure about the idea of doing female and male fashions together on a show. When I see the footage of these shows, I'm, I'm I look more at the female clothes, because they're more opulent. So I think that the men are a bit lost, so I wonder if we shouldn't also, uh, again, put more focus on men fashion. And in the end, I would like to say also that because of this focus of, on garments, 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 garments versus fashion, I believe there will be a comeback of couture, and that couture will become the norm for luxury houses to truly express themselves related to fragrance, and that hopefully, I believe, it will happen soon that couture houses will publish their patents online, free, as an open source, that young people can actually make couture garments and be, fall in love with the brand even when they are young and poor. This is what's happening in design, industrial design. People share their ideas all the time online. Fashion doesn't do it. Fashion is not yet altruistic, doesn't know we live in a society of bonding, and therefore fashion is old-fashioned. Um, it's, um, it's a truth which can be changed, 
Nothing changes, but things change. Le vêtement à la même. This was such a funny movement of this kid in New York who made um, a sort of citation on this parka of vêtements. And I would like to give you something for the end, because it's in relation to what we saw this morning. I believe that we need to grow, in, believe in the future, and that we have to believe in women. And this is why I want to share with you a video of very wise women giving us very wise advice on how to cope in this time of crisis. Thank you. Thank you.